Hi, I'm Lee Teschler with Machine Design Magazine. We're here with Jay Becker from Dunker Motor. And um, we're standing in front of a little demonstration that has two servo motors and a power supply. And the point to note is there's no separate controller. And Jay's going to tell us a little bit about what kind of circumstances you can use smart motors to do your controlling without a separate controller. So Jay, tell us a little bit about what we're, uh, what we're looking at here, really. Uh, what we're demonstrating today, like you said, is the ability for our motors in certain circumstances to be used as the master. Uh, some machines the customer doesn't have or doesn't want to use a PLC or a higher level CAN master, uh, maybe to reduce cost or uh, perhaps the application doesn't require a, a big PLC to control a, a few axes of motion. And so what we're showing here today is, uh, like you mentioned, a, a couple of our servo motors. We have a BG75MI motor, which stands for Master Integrated, and we have a BG45 uh, motor that's acting as the slave. And this box that you see here is really nothing more than a DC power supply. And in the back, we have uh, just a terminal block to distribute the, uh, the wires to, that deliver power and, and uh, turn on and off the power to the demonstration. Okay. So beyond that, all of the intelligence resides in the motors. Um, I say motors because they both have programs residing on them, um, mainly the positions that are sequentially indexed. And the larger motor, BG75, has the master's program in it. So we use a piece of software running on a PLC or on a PC or a laptop that uh, the user can use to set up the, the positions, the number of counts, and also the sequence that the master needs to index through. Once that is set up by the user, the program and those parameters are downloaded into the motor. And after that, the motor has all of that intelligence inside the motor and doesn't require the use of the laptop or the software anymore. So <clears throat> when the motor powers up, it has the program in it. And in this case, it's sequencing through uh, a different number of these slots around the dial. And at each point, it, uh, it stops in, in the position. And over the CAN network, which is what you see in the purple cables, we're sending commands to the slave to index the rev or one, one revolution of the dunker D through that slot. And then the slave motor, by way of uh, can open PDOs, uh, which are like telegrams or messages that are sent over the network, reports back to the master when it's finished. Um, and then the master knows that it's out of the way and it's not going to crash into anything and it can go on and index to its, its next position. I see. Well, there's got to be some limitations to the kind of programming you can do in a, a smart motor. Um, where do you find the upper limits on that before well, you have to go to a separate controller? It, it kind of depends on how much information needs to be transmitted over the network. Um, and it also, um, there, there can be some limitations in the amount of memory space we have to write code. We're not selling uh, controllers like PLCs that, that typically control an entire machine. So obviously it's, it's not a, uh, a machine controller. It's designed for maybe a half a dozen or so axes of control. We can do that. But it really depends on, on the program uh, that has to be written whether or not uh, it exceeds the amount of available memory that we have. Um, but in cases where we have a limitation with memory and you have maybe 127 axes of motion, um, which is, the, is uh, the upper end of how many axes that you can address, uh, can open motors that you can address on any one CAN network without uh, switches and, and uh, other networking things that expand it. Um, you could use a higher level control like a PLC with a CAN master or an, a lot of HMIs these days have CAN open masters in them as well. In which case these motors could all be slaves on a network and be totally controlled by that higher level slave. And we see this a lot of times in the solar industry where you've got hundreds or thousands of axes of motion in a field that have to adjust uh, solar tracking devices or uh, collectors or photovoltaic panels and that sort of thing. In which case, an application like that, you would typically have a, a, a higher level PLC that can control many axes of motion. Uh, in this case, we would probably be slaves in both axes. I see. So when you're talking about just programming a, a smart motor without a, a separate controller, 
Um, is there a ballpark figure for the, the maximum size of that program that's practical? Uh, well, yeah, our, our, our program uh, memory space is uh, about 400 lines of code. And without getting into the, the specifics of what the code looks like, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it's actually quite flexible. So, so we, we can do quite a bit with even 400 lines of code. I see. And uh, does that have any implications when it comes to things like response time or uh, the latency of the, the motors themselves? Um, no, the, the program, the, the instruction time is very short in, in the neighborhood of, uh, if I recall correctly, I think it's tens of microseconds uh, per instruction. So the, the, the speed of the program is very fast. Um, sometimes, depending on how many uh, axes you have on a CAN network and the amount of information that you have passing back and forth, uh, you could run into ceilings on, on uh, the, let's say, the bandwidth of the CAN open network. Um, but we typically implement PDO messaging, which are unconfirmed messages that are very quick. They have a very high priority, and they're used basically for triggering moves back and forth. So um, in a lot of cases, like a, as we are doing in this case, we're not sending um, small increments of position data and reading back encoder positions where uh, the bus traffic on this demonstration is very uh, very limited actually. We have uh, the positions stored in the motor and we're just triggering with very short PDO messages, go to position two, go to position 10, go to position one. So the messaging in this case, in this example, is very um, limited and therefore we don't stress the bus at all in this case. Okay. And uh, you've got one motor and uh, master and one slave in this, this, this instance. Um, is there an upper limit on the number of slaves that would make sense to uh, do just with a, a smart motor? Well, <clears throat> CAN allows us to have up to 127 motors on a network. Uh, we could control an address and write and send messages to that many with a single master. Um, but really it depends on whether or not we can feasibly do it or realistically do it all depends on what information, how much information and how often that information needs to, needs to go across the bus and whether or not we run into any limitations on the programming space. So it's not an easy question to answer because every application is different and um, I, I can't really give you a better answer than that other than it's application specific. Yeah, gotcha. okay. But it is possible to address up to 127. Okay.